Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the VW Nut 1967 channel on YouTube. Uh, today we visit the main classic car museum. Uh, Mrs. VW Nut and myself uh, were on vacation and we happened to go through here. We're about to see a whole bunch of really nice cars. So uh, let's get started. I'll uh, start out with a little, uh, go ahead and pause it and grab your popcorn and go back and look at uh, Punch Buggy there. Uh, this is an early Buick uh, outfitted for maneuvering in the snow. You see it's got tracks on the back, four-wheel drive there, and tracks for steering. Um, love a nice wood steering wheel. Adjustments there for timing and fuel mixture, I believe. Uh, there you go, four-wheel drive. This thing was cool, made in Pennsylvania. There are two wheels up front, one in the rear, about to show you. Uh, Volkswagen engine. Uh, 67 only air cleaner on the Volkswagen engine. They thought it was cool that the um, shift rod linkage went right through what they thought was the engine, but it actually just goes through the hole where your um, throttle cable would go through. So they thought it was cool that it went through the engine, but really it's just going through a hole that was already in the tent. Not very impressive for a Volkswagen guy, but they thought it was very cool. But 67 only air cleaner right there, I point out. Uh, I thought that was cool, being the VW 1967. Uh, great display, uh, there's a couple of displays in here. Uh, this one is of all the different plates for Maine um, and what they're for. I definitely, if you guys make it to the state of Maine, uh, definitely go by here. Uh, you can just put uh, Maine Classic Car Museum in the Google or there and it'll tell you how to get there and where it's at. Um, definitely worth the trip. Probably one of the best uh, inside car museum, car shows, car history places I've ever been. Um, looking at this interior about how comfy it probably was back in its day. Probably the comfiest of interiors. Um, mostly because, as you can see, it probably didn't have a lot of suspension. Um, I always loved the the earliest of cars had the hugest running boards, like you needed all that running board to step into the car, right? And then um, I started to figure out that they had all this information on every single car right there. Um, so we start here with the 1940 Mamron Harrington all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, um, shiny Woody. This, this is just the first example of how nice the cars are in this uh, museum. This thing was amazing. Um, the wood was perfect, the paint was perfect. Like ready to hit a beach or a cliff or a, to take it skiing or anything. Like it was ready to go. Just beautiful, like the comfiest interior you'll see. I'll show you. Oh, and there's Mrs. BW, not right there. Just comfy, like sitting at the couch at, the, at home all the room for all your stuff. I don't know what some of these cars got to be worth, but this collection has got to be, in my mind, priceless. Uh, 56 Cadillac wagon, Viewmaster wagon, oh look at that. All the wood, all the wood paneling. And Cadillac always with chrome and wood and actual wood inside. And, um, just, just a beautiful car. There, I'm probably going to say that a lot of times during this video. Uh, just, and then just again, the chrome. I probably just pointed that out to my beautiful wife. Just look at how much time you have to spend shining the chrome on that thing. There's so many nice cars in here. Uh, Nash Suburban Woody, 1948. Look at just another beautiful, beautiful car. 36 Bentley 4.5 liter. The restoration on these cars is amazing. Look, look at how nice the paint is and the chrome. Like, if you've ever shined chrome on anything, you know how long it takes. Pay attention. You see that hammer right there? Don't worry, we'll get to the hammer again. And then the seats, like, it's like they built furniture inside the car. Like, live, it's like living room furniture inside the car. So nice. step back and admire the skirts and the paint and the doors. And the craftsmanship, it's just craftsmanship. Huge, 
huge fenders right into the running boards. Look at all that chrome. Like lights and horns and there's the hammer. I'm not sure what it was for. Pry two. I'm not sure. 39 Alpha. Oh, the skirts. See-through skirts. Just enough skirt. And, and black and chrome. Like, there wasn't any dust on any one of these cars. I don't know how they do it, but they must constantly be wiping these things down. They were just amazing. The hidden Alfa Romeo lights behind the Alfa Romeo sign. 1967 Ampha car. These things are cool. They're not a great, I've heard that they're not a great car and they're not a great boat, but they, they do them both. You could drive it right down the boat ramp and, uh, and, and switch the lever there under the dash and be off fishing. Well, apologize, we'll see what Patina's up to later. That's uh, in the background you hear, my guard dog. Um, that's the exhaust to keep it up out of the water. And then uh, a couple of propellers right there. So it makes it go while it's in the water. <clears throat> they had a good example of about four fuel pumps here. Early fuel pumps. Um, this is how we used to get gas for some of my younger viewers. Uh, this is even before my time. Um, probably my grandparent, my father, mother's time. Of course, we spent a lot of time here. 61, 21, 23 window. You can see. Look at it. Just you can't be the VW nut and just stay there for a minute. Look at this. Is 23 window. It's a sliding sunroof. 23 window. I'll just drink some water. You guys just take it in. in that paint, 1964 Ferrari 2 plus 2, 330 GT 2 plus 2. <clears throat> you know if you see that badge right there, you're talking only the finest. This is, this is more probably, I don't know, it's a very nice car. Um, very nice. Like, I, I wish they would have just let me sit in some of these. Like that just looks like the most comfiest of interiors. The, again, the, the craftsmanship, the woodwork, the, the the attention to detail, like the the chrome around the damn windows, like beautiful car. Rolex baby, this is one I wish they would let me sit in. You'll see in just a second why when it's compared to a regular size car. I wanted to try and fit in it. I believe that's what I asked the wifey right there if I could squeeze in there. I'm 6'3", 220 pounds. I think I could probably just fit right in there. I'm not sure what I had for an engine or anything about it. But they, if they have a pretty good website if you go over there too. They probably have stuff on all these cars over there as well. I could have spent more time in here. I just didn't have a lot of time. 1950 AC Sport. Not that I didn't have a lot of time. I had time. I just didn't have so much time that I could stop and read every single one of these. Um, again, just a beautiful car. Look at, just look at this car. So amazing. The whole collection is like this, just like it's top of the line stuff. Like I couldn't believe that we got to even just be this close to this many amazing cars. So I had to shoot it and bring it to you guys, so that's what we're doing right now today. So I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. Austin Martin, this is the, um, what is it, the 007 sedan or 007 car? I don't know. You guys will correct me, I'm sure, in the comments, for sure. Anyway, it's a very nice car. Why are we? Another super luxurious interior. Look at the woodwork. Like wood and chrome, chrome and wood. 
Like what are all those switches for? And how do you keep those wire wheels so clean? Don't you just want to jump in there and flip some switches? Thirty-two MGPA. When you look at the passenger compartment of this, you come we come around here and you see the foot compartment for the passenger side right here. Your pretty much foot is right on the transmission right there. You see that? You're on the bell housing and the transmission right there. You're shifting. You're the passenger. You're shifting right next to the passenger's foot. Yeah. Still a very cool car. Very nice car. They had a, uh, this is where the punch buggy thing came from, they had a toy car collection just for Volkswagens. Um, and the rules of punch buggy. You, you could pause it and go refresh your beverage or your popcorn or whatever you're having your meal or whatever right now. And uh, go over some more cars. There's a couple more displays. We do one about hood ornaments here in just a little while. But this one was just for Volkswagen toys. Nineteen thirty seven job all one seventy five motorcycle. You want to see a pretty motorcycle? Just wait, here it is. Look at this thing. So beautiful. Like that is probably the most gorgeous motorcycle I, I have I've ever seen. Like it is like it's they call it a museum because that's a museum piece motorcycle. It's beautiful. Delahaye 130, 47 Delahaye. Oh, the color changing paint. I did mention to Mrs. VW Nut that she should make this her new commuter. Go ahead and leave that in the comments if you think the Delahaye should be Mrs. VW Nut's new commuter. I definitely think it should be. Like, the color scheme is perfect. For, I don't, I'm pretty sure the top probably matches. Like, but even in the cut, like, to make it to these colors. Like the time, effort, and craftsmanship that went into that. The paint on this car is amazing. You see it change from the body to the fender. 52 Mercedes-Benz Cabriolet. You're going to think I go too fast through this car, but I share it with the next one because I was too big to squeeze between the two cars right here. I was afraid I was going to scratch one of the cars trying to get the shot, so I had to put myself up against the wall here. So we're jump right next to the 37, that's the one next to it, and then uh, I'll get back in there behind them and uh, take a good look at them. But this motor right here is engine, sorry, engine. This engine and engine compartment right here is absolutely you could eat off of it. I don't. I don't think I've seen a, a dirty engine compartment. Uh, I. I didn't. I didn't see a dirty window. I didn't see a dirty car. I didn't see. It was museum quality stuff all the way through. But look at how plush the seats. The seats and the interior and oh, it's beautiful cars. Beautiful. See now. Now we can get a little more of the other Mercedes Cabriolet. built stuff to last. 57 BMW IZ. I wanted to climb in this one too. We actually sent a picture of this over to the shop apprentice and let him know that this could be his first car because uh, we didn't figure it could fit too many friends in there uh, with him to cause too much trouble while he was running around. Um, he actually took us up on the offer and wanted the IZ so uh, we may have to go make a deal for this IZ for the shop apprentice. Um, <laughs> I don't know how safe they are or practical. Uh, 
59 Jaguar uh, for sale right here. Uh, I, I think that just about everything in the museum, probably, if you contact them, has probably got a price on it. Because that's how I was led to believe it when I left there. Uh, you can see it, we're about to get into a little Honda right there, Honda N600. These things have surprisingly more room in them than you would think once you put a big guy in them. I always think of the movie Police Academy when the uh, large gentleman gets in and rips the uh, seat out of the front of it and then sits in the back seat and drives it. That is the image of these cars in my head. This is the Woody version of it. Messerschmitt. Is it a plane? Is it a car? Is it a roller skate? Is it a toy? Is it a... Is it really something cool? That's for sure. Part airplane. See? Like a cockpit. Forty-eight Fiat Model B, something to do with the sliding ragtop version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever that word was, meant sliding ragtop, because I think that's what it's got there. Sliding rag. Mm -hmm. Twenty-eight Packer Six Roadster. Start right at the grill, right at the hood. Look at that hood ornament. Also told you the temperature of your coolant, and which would then tell you the temperature of your engine. Right to the rumble seat. Probably super comfy as well. Steps for the get in the rumble seat. Lusciously comfortable interior. Fine wood craftsmanship. Automobile mascots or hood ornaments. You can pause and refresh your beverage right there and read about them. I kind of go through them too fast here. I probably could have slowed it down a little bit in editing. I apologize. You may want to stop it and go back. Some of these are really cool. The last one, if you if you have a young child watching this lot, not this one, but the next one, probably cover their eyes. Yep, totally inappropriate, this one. Listen, I warned you. I totally warned you. Martin Wasp Rickshaw Victoria. Yep. This one is yellow. You'll see. Say yellow, Brian. I haven't seen yellow yet. Oh yeah, the yellow's coming. It looks like a baby bassinet in there. Cool hood ornament though. A uh, little jet plane uh, sort of uh, looking exposed like raw metal. Interesting engine. And then the yellow starts. Like a like a baby carriage, but it's got. Uh, I did have to sneak my way behind it after we check. I go too fast here, so you just have to slow me down for some of these ones too. Um, but because there's some cool ones here. I did have to sneak around here. For the whole side shot of it, and I believe there was a step right here. No. 31 Cadillac Victoria Coupe. Oh, yeah, look at all that chrome and roof. And I'm not sure what my camera was doing, but I have a 
believe I was telling uh, the beautiful wife about the individual doors to open up to cool, help cool the engine uh, depending on how it was running. Cadillac ahead of its time. Interior wasn't really made for the driver, I don't assume, in those days. Probably more made for the passenger. you could just can't even believe it runs this was my favorite 48 Tucker um, definitely pause and read that for yourselves uh, this is a car before its time they say uh, this I can't even believe I was fortunate enough to even see this Tucker rear engine car uh, the engine they say was out of a helicopter it was, uh, used it wasn't a used helicopter engine but he used a helicopter design engine. Um, so, trunk in the front like an elephant or a Volkswagen. Um, so much room inside here, you'll see I just reached right in there. It's like a spaceship in there. Um, so much room inside the front of this thing. It's like super luxurious. It's like, look, it's like a spaceship. All the passenger room in the world. Suicide doors rear engine later in the video uh, I just seen for a second that I seen the exhaust right there in the camera but later I notice it as I'm looking at another car and I stop and point it out hopefully I remember that it's the Tucker when I was uh, looking at the clip earlier I had trouble remembering that it was the Tucker 36 Hudson convertible also in yellow we had Hudson 8 hood or chrome big horns lights, eight foot of hood, like a big banana driving down the road, sitting on a couch. Rumble seat, this thing has like a lantern for a stoplight. One of the stoplights looks like a lantern. I think I get a shot of it right here. Yep, there it is, lantern stoplight. Nice car. Everything in here. Most beautiful paint jobs. Most well maintained paint, cars, everything. Everything in here is A quality cars. 27 Packard 336. Dual windshield something or other. Look at that engine. I, I, don't, even, I don't even have the words to describe it to you guys. Just look. Just look at this car. There's a whole story about this car. Um, it was with one of the American presidents. Um, I'm sure it's on their website. Uh, but uh, there's some secret, uh, secret pockets in the front doors for the Secret Service for their sidearms uh, to protect the president. Um, I don't. I just seen it as a cool car. My my beautiful wife. She was reading as much of the things as she could because she's seen got a higher than third grade education for reading than I do. Um, so now we move on to the 37 Packard. This monstrous front end, just a monster. The Packard right down to the headlights, fog lights. So much steel and metal in that car. Like enough steel in that they wouldn't even put that much steel and metal into 10 cars they make today as they're in that Packard right there. So you could fit four friends, you and four friends in that front seat and still have room. And then still have a whole back seat for like eight people. Look at how many people you could fit back there. So much room they had to put footrests in, adjustable footrests. There's so much room back there. 1940 Cadillac. Like, how can you not love anything Cadillac? 
big chrome, big paint, big eight, nine foot of front end. Everything trimmed in chrome and wood. Roll up windshield for your back passengers if you wanted. Look at this all wood dash. Probably some expensive wood. There's a clock in the look, everything had a ashtray because you know you couldn't kill yourself with cigarettes or cigars back then. More adjustable foot rests. Then you had to have a trunk big enough to haul your entire stuff with you, all of it. 1937 Cord 810 Phaeton. Cord, um, I, there isn't too many of these that much I do know about Cord. Um, I do think the exhaust through the fender is cool and the time they took to build the wheels the way they built them. Front suicide doors is cool. Super comfy interior. Paint matched wheel. Um, diamond tuck on the dash. Not diamond, um, you know what I'm talking about for the dash. Just a super, another super amazing, beautiful, whether it's original or restored or, and what are the little buttons on the, on the, on the turn signal switch or the gear shift lever? Yeah, I had so many questions, like you'll see right here, like, what are those? Like, what are all the levers do? Like, are we driving a car or flying an aircraft? There we go, on the tucker. All six exhaust, one for each. Duesenberg, 31 Duesenberg. The blind quarter club sedan. Look at this thing. The headlight wouldn't even fit in the passenger compartment of my bug. But the detail to finish that, to, to finish that engine, like that thing is, it's exquisite. woodwork on the running boards and inside and just amazing, just so nice. Trunk on the trunk, where the trunk goes. And look at how much a car there is from the back to the front. No, this is EW not reading the important stuff to help me with this part of the video. More toy cars. This one's got a little driver in it, made out of some automobile parts. A little toy tractor. One ginormous shoe. That was an uh, exhibit about uh, roadside attractions. 1954 Kaiser Darren. This is. Uh, this is, it looked underpowered for the size of the car it was for me, but I've never seen one of these before. I don't really know much about it. One of my favorites because of right here, what we're about to show you. First of all, look at that interior, but then there's a pocket door. Do you see what I'm saying? The door slides into the fender. Did you see that? Closed pocket door. It's a po it's, the car has pocket doors. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen on a car. Like that's what made this one of my favorites, the pocket door. There's the door closed, the other one's half open, slid into the pocket. It's amazing. I don't know why they ever scrapped it. 1960 Edsel Ranger. Yeah, there it is. Just like the Edsel spaceship. Big fins on the back. We'll probably get around to the tail light section and it'll look like a jet fighter. There you go front seat big enough for you and four friends all the luxury back seat for four more friends there we go just like a jet fighter look at that thing ready for takeoff that's all right across the back 1951 Lincoln oh another car with about nine foot of hood and all the chrome
dishwasher inside, white top. Look at that, it's beautiful with the white top. Gray interior. 1951 Hudson Hornet. Oh, the shop apprentice. So I must have watched this movie Cars a billion times with the shop apprentice when he was little. It was his, it was everything he wanted was to Lightning McQueen and Doc Hudson. It's still a nice car. The intake on this thing, you'll see, we'll get around to it in a second. Probably ahead of its time. Stripped out for racing. Yeah, just leave the front seat in there. Strip out the back for racing. But look at this intake. Dual air cleaners, dual carbs. It's probably high performance for today. Fifty one Hudson Hornet convertible. Oh beautiful red. I got a color matched visor on this thing. Beautiful red. Look at how shiny that red is. Big fan of red, in case you guys hadn't noticed from the colors of my bugs. But look at this red and chrome. And, oh, I would have taken this one home too. The D 1942 Oldsmobile 98 Customer Cruiser Convertible. Boy, they weren't skimping when they named this one. They couldn't just say. 48 convertible. No. Hydramatic. Nice wood dash. Now we're outside. That is an early bug. I'm not exact. It's early enough to be a split window, an actual split window bug, from everything that I could tell. Um, really nice shape. Uh, it just happened to be one of the cars outside. I'm not sure what it has to do with the museum or what kind of car is next to it, but um, I did shoot some clips outside. This is a right-hand drive, I believe. That's a Sky Skyline or a GTR, one of those. Um, yeah, that was for the shop apprentice. A couple of Woodies and an old Thunderbird, or a Woody and old Thunderbird Corvette. These are just sitting outside on the main street, I assume. Uh, they're for sale, I'm not sure. I'll oh, get to a couple of cool things here. I, I know that I'm getting close to the end of the video. I'd like to thank you guys for listening to me ramble about these amazing cars and how cool they are. I'd like to thank the museum for having me and Mrs. VW not there and allowing me to shoot video while I was there. Um, please go by and check out their stuff. I'll link their website in the description of the video. Um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for being here. Uh, as we continue to cruise along outside, I'll probably thank you guys again as we get nearer to the end of it. Um, we'll see what Patina's up to here in just a little bit. That was kind of a cool little woody right there. I was really intrigued by whatever this thing was. Um, there was two of them. There was this one and there was another little Honda coming up that I really liked that I thought that's kind of a cool car. And I, don't, I did get the emblem right there, but I don't know much more about it than that. I just liked it because it was different. And it had, you know, yellow and white interior and a TV screen. And, you know, if you wanted your um, Z car or Firebird or your older Mercedes or your grandma's Thunderbird, here's the little Honda car that I like too. I thought, man, I just commuter in that one, but I don't really have a commute. So then we moved on to more stuff that was outside big wagon. Back in the day when they made cars out of steel where you could just smash them into stuff. That big Cadillac. Uh, the hearse with the guy in it. This one probably would have came home with us too had we had the uh, the time or the means or the energy. So we'll see what Patina's up to. Again, I'd like to thank you guys for being here and that we'll see you in a couple of days.
Hey, that's my thumb.